Hey, my name is Amanda Clark. Well, at this point we had left Union Square and somehow got turned onto East 12th Street. And we were heading up to Fifth Avenue and the police formed, successfully formed a blockade at this point. And about half of our group was able to get past Fifth Avenue before the police put out their net and the rest of us were caught there. At this point, um, those five girls that were corralled and maced, that had happened, had just happened. Um, so things got a little bit out, had already gotten quite violent. Um, a number of people had already been pretty, uh, really violently assaulted. Um, by the police. So at this point, they made it clear that they weren't moving anywhere. We tried to protest at the barricade um, at the moment. Someone on the other side was arrested for suggesting that perhaps we get over the barricade. Um, was probably arrested on the spot for saying that. Um, so at that point, it became pretty clear that they were going to arrest us, and they did. Promptly arrested all 82 of us sitting there. Um, it took maybe like 45 minutes just to even, I mean we were cuffed, so we were sitting there cuffed for like 45 minutes or so. And then we're taken by fours, by our new arresting officers, into the various forms of transportation. For me it was an MTA bus. We got the bus. Nice. We got the bus. <laughs> and we then sat there on the corner of 12th and 5th for two hours because the police officers had no idea where we were going. And they kept asking each other, like, where the hell are we going? And we're all sitting there kind of like, really? You're okay. So... Was there not a plan before? <laughs> there was no plan. There was no plan to be had. The police officers were super pissed that they were even there because they were all working overtime. Um, so after two hours we left, we were informed that we were going to 1PP, 1 Police Plaza, which is not typically used at all for holding people. So we were taken to 1PP, got there, then sat in the parking lot for two hours on the bus because somehow they were, I don't know, there was confusion or something. By this point, while my handcuffs were pretty, they weren't tight at all, like they were fine. A number of people's hands had already turned blue on the bus. Um, one person had entirely lost feeling in half of his hand. And we asked the officers a number of times over the course of these four hours to please loosen their handcuffs. It is exactly as ridiculous as it sounds. Um, and they kept telling us that they couldn't do it, that they couldn't replace them. I can't just uncuff you. So by the time we got to 1PP, it's like, okay, this kid has been sitting here, his hands are blue and we need to replace them now. We need to get medical attention and they need to be replaced. We were told that they don't have any handcuffs, so I suggested perhaps you could go get some from the One masses police. of police officers inside the building, <laughs> yeah. or the ones like flanking both sides of the bus. No, we can't. Finally, they, I guess they realized that they had handcuffs because they eventually over the I guess like the last hour here, they switched out, I think, two people's handcuffs um, and fixed them. One kid actually was cut in the process, like was physically cut in the process of ripping his handcuffs because they were so tight that they couldn't get the blade underneath fully. Um, he was the kid who lost feeling in his hands and after the hour that it took to be like, not processed, but brought into the building, I guess, and then into the holding cells, still had to regain feeling in his hands. Um, what was the holding cell like? What happened after that? Um, well, the women and the men were split up. The men stayed in their holding cell, which was really large. The women's holding cell was really, really small, so we had a bunch of people sitting on a bench in there and sitting on the floor. And we were moved into our cells because we were on the cell block. I'm assuming that the cells are used for one to two people. We had between four and six people in each cell. And there were 82 people there, and they never used that building. One cell was left empty. I don't know, um, but they kept on moving people around because we were getting too loud because we were talking. Um, we were harassed a bit by the officer that told us to stop laughing, stop talking, stop being loud. She wouldn't be laughing if she were in our situations. Um, and sorry, rewinding for a second, one of the officers, when I informed him that someone's handcuffs were cutting off circulation, informed me that this individual will live. And that was that. Um, you can, nice you can live with no hands, it's fine. Hands are not important, guys. 
anyway, um, he, so yeah, so we were put into our cell box and we were told we'll be there until whenever, we're not going to stay overnight, which I guess technically we didn't because no one stayed until the next day, no one stayed for a full 24 hours. Um, we were arrested around 2 o'clock is when we were actually cuffed on 12th Street. We were told that we would be released by 8.30, 9 o'clock. That got pushed back to 9.30, 10 o'clock. Around 11 o'clock we asked for an update and we were informed that the officers had just taken their dinner break and that they would resume processing soon. They were taking people, there was a line of officers, 20 officers long, um, 80 people. Um, and they were taking them very slowly, individually, one officer at a time. So I think the first people, the first two women were released just before midnight, I think. Um, there are no clocks in jail. <laughs> but, um, so you know, that took a while. I was released um, around 1 a.m., so I was in custody for 11 hours straight. I believe that the last people were released around 4.35 o'clock a.m. Um, we were fed. Bologna sandwiches and oat brand cereal? Uh, no, 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 no. Don't overestimate what they <laughs> give you in jail. We were told we could, the plums were awesome. They were these really little plums and they were really good. We also got cartons of milk that were like not really that cold. And I mean, you know, they fed us whatever, but we got peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, which were slices of stale bread with a little bit of peanut butter on them. Jelly got lost somewhere in the packaging. <laughs> or I took it very seriously. It was not fun. It's sort of funny because it was just fucking ridiculous. But um, what I did take a great, great issue with, and I'm still really, really angry about this. In the cells, the toilets are exposed. And, you know, all the women were together. Male officers continually walked up and down the cell block for absolutely no reason and were not stopped. We asked a number of times to either please stop them from walking back there or please let us know if they are. The female officer said that she would comply with that and did. she did nothing to ensure that male officers were not walking back there. And I heard a couple cells down a number of women were exposed to these male officers. They didn't know about it. It was discriminatory. It was, I mean, yeah. all sorts of violations are all over that. It was absolutely horrific, I thought. And on top of the fact that we were all there in the cells for hours on end, all to be written tickets. We were told that we were under arrest and had no formal charges pressed against us. We were instead given tickets and we were given a summons to show up in court in some whatever date in the future. And obviously this was just to prove a point. A number of people that we saw coming in have been brutalized, were you know, cuts on their legs. One kid had a, a huge gash on his eyebrow, refused medical attention. They were bandaged up. I think one of the guys, um, I think his name is Lewis, that I talked to, said that after he was released, he got a bandage, and that was it. And that when he returned to the encampment, the medics treated him. We were, 911 was called a number of times from within 1PP, and we were told by the dispatcher that we were in 1PP, why can't the police help us? And when we told them that we were being refused medical attention, they hung up. The 911 dispatchers hung up on us. Everyone that needed it was refused medical attention. I believe a girl in the cell over for me either broke or severely sprained. I think her, her leg or her ankle, no medical attention whatsoever. I was luckily not hurt, not hurt at all because I you know, went peacefully because I don't want another bullshit charge added onto the already bullshit charge of disorderly conduct. But that was jail.